Good morning and welcome to Keeping an Eye on the Geopolitical Ball with uh, Jamie Shea, Friends of Europe, Senior Fellow here in Brussels. Uh, in recent weeks we've been looking at crises in and around Europe and God knows there are unfortunately many of those to monitor at the moment. But at the same time, a crisis potentially developing on the other side of the world in the Asia Pacific uh, carries far more danger for international peace and security. I'm talking here of the growing tension between China and Taiwan. Now China has considered uh, Taiwan as a renegade province ever since 1949 when the nationalist forces under Chiang Kai-shek went to the then island of Formosa uh, having lost the battle uh, against the communist forces under Mao Zedong. Since then Taiwan has developed into a vibrant democracy and a successful economy and it's that which seems to make it in Chinese eyes an unacceptable threat because as long as Taiwan exists uh, the discourse of the Chinese Communist Party that only they represent a viable political and economic model for the prosperity and development of the Chinese people doesn't really hold uh, water. So China clearly wants uh, Taiwan uh, back. Over the years, there have been a number of military crises that have almost led to war. For example, in 1957, when the Chinese Communist forces shelled Kuemoy and Matsu, two outlying islands, and the Eisenhower administration had to intervene. In the 1990s, when President Clinton sent aircraft carriers through the Straits of Taiwan as a deterrent. In more recent times, however, China has seemed to be pursuing the diplomatic track and the charm offensive or soft diplomacy vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan. It's tried to successfully persuade many countries around the world not to recognize Taiwan or withdraw recognition in exchange for economic cooperation uh, with uh, Beijing. But it's also encouraged more cross-straits movement of people and more economic investment, more economic ties between China and Taiwan in the hope of wooing the tiny Taiwanese people back into uh, unification. More recently, however, China seems to be backing away from this soft diplomacy course. The re-election uh, just recently of the Taiwan president, Chai Ing-wen, shows convincingly that the Taiwanese prefer to follow their separate course of development. They've seen in Hong Kong, uh, with the crackdown by the Chinese recently and the introduction of the security law, that Beijing really doesn't like this one country, two systems model, which is what the Taiwanese would prefer if ever they get, get going to draw closer uh, to uh, uh, China. And therefore, we've seen in recent days some worrying signs of muscle flexing by Beijing. Uh, the uh, Chinese have been practicing beach landings on Hainan. Uh, they have been sending their jet fighters across the median line in the Taiwan uh, uh, Straits. They've been carrying out a number of missile test firings. And uh, Chinese TV and social media are, are full of war videos. Uh, one, in fact, even shows a uh, simulated Chinese landing on the American island of Guam to seize uh, Anderson uh, Air Force Base. Uh, this muscle flexing, uh, of course, may be posturing, uh, but it's also uh, driving the relations between Taiwan and China to a new level of crisis. So what should the international community be doing? Well, three things. Number one, the United States is stepping up its arms sales to Taiwan to help Taiwan to modernize its armed forces. This is often known as the porcupine strategy. In other words, simply making life much more difficult should China ever try to seize Taiwan uh, by force. The US has also been sending some more senior officials to Taiwan recently, uh, although not the Secretary of Defense or the Secretary of State, which China might consider to be overly provocative. The EU and European countries may not wish to sell weapons to Taiwan, but they could certainly help Taiwan to improve its resilience in areas like hybrid warfare or cyber defense, where Europeans have recently a lot of experience. So show more solidarity with Taiwan and put it more on the diplomatic uh, radar screen. That would be the first thing. Uh, secondly, what the European Union could do uh, also is to step up uh, diplomatic engagement with Taiwan. Uh, that would also 
I mean, uh, more high level visits, even if not at the uh, uh, top level, to show that Taiwan is not simply a US concern, that this is not simply part of a US China bilateral dispute, but it's more broad, a concern more broadly shared by the international community. For instance, China, uh, very much at the moment in pursuing its dispute with the US, wants to improve its relations with India. It knows that it cannot be up against the entire international community uh, at the same time. So so more international engagement could also help to serve as a political deterrent. Third and finally, the EU needs to realize that major global conflict could break out more readily in the Asia Pacific than perhaps other regions of the world. Uh, and that although it may not have a major military role in the, uh, in the region, uh, it cannot leave it to the United States or the Asia Pacific powers alone and has now to join in the conversation which the United States has started about how to form viable regional security structures in Asia, in the Asia Pacific that can preserve the status quo, a status quo which may not be totally satisfactory to anybody, but which nonetheless has allowed Taiwanese to live in freedom and economic prosperity for the last 70 years. Thank you very much for watching me today. I look forward to engaging with you again next week.